The Coming Wilderness Journey by Lael Israel. Prophecies of the children of Israel speak of our regathering and deliverance as a people to be placed back into our own land of Israel. And it shall come to pass, in the place where it was said unto them, You are not my people, there shall it be said, You are the sons of the living Elohim. Then shall the children of Yehuda and the children of Israel be gathered together, and appoint themselves one head, and they shall come up out of the land, for great shall be the day of Jezreel. Hosea chapter 1 verses 10 through 11. Just as Israel was first gathered as a nation in the exodus from Egyptian slavery, our people shall be regathered in the second exodus from slavery and captivity out of America, the land of bondage and sun worship. As I live, said Yahweh Elohim, surely with a mighty hand and with a stretched out arm and with fury poured out will I rule over you and I will bring you out from the people and will gather you out of the countries wherein you are scattered. Ezekiel chapter 20 verses 33 through 34. Just as Israel journeyed through the wilderness to Israel, our people, the nation of Israel, shall once again journey through and tabernacle in the wilderness. However, this time the tests, judgments, and miracles that ensued over 40 years shall rapidly progress in just three and one half years. And I will bring you into the wilderness of the people, and there will I plead with you face to face like as I pleaded with your fathers in the wilderness of the land of Egypt. So will I plead with you, says Yahweh Elohim. Ezekiel chapter 20, verses 35 through 36. Yahweh has promised our people many wonderful things that will cause the hearts of the righteous to rejoice, for Yahweh is a covenant God. And it shall be, at that day, said Yahweh, that you shall call me Ishai, husband, and shall call me no more Baalai, the Lord. For I will take away the names of Baalim out of her mouth, and they shall no more be remembered by their name. And in that day will I make a covenant for them with the beasts of the field, and with the fowls of heaven, and with the creeping things of the ground and will make them to lie down safely. And I will betroth you unto me forever. Yea, I will betroth you unto me in righteousness, and in judgment, and in loving kindness, and in mercies. And it shall come to pass in that day, I will hear, said Yahweh, I will hear the heavens, and they shall hear the earth, and the earth shall hear the corn, and the wine, and the oil and they shall hear Jezreel. Afterward shall the children of Israel return and seek Yahweh their Elohim and David their king and shall fear Yahweh and his goodness in the latter days. Hosea chapter 2 verses 14 through chapter 3 and verse 5. Once in the wilderness we will seek a city and build a place in which to dwell. He turns the wilderness into a standing water and dry ground into water springs. And there he makes the hungry to dwell that they may prepare a city for habitation. And sow the fields and plant vineyards which may yield fruits of increase. He blesses them also so that they are multiplied greatly and suffers not their cattle to decrease. Psalms 107, verse 35 through 38. While in the wilderness, the great tribulation will rage in the outside world to its conclusion with the mark of the beast throughout all Europe. This is Yahweh's visitation of the Gentiles and the rest of Israel, the 10 tribes who were mingled among them. Since the tents of Yehuda must be saved first, Benjamin, Yehuda, and Levi will be called into the wilderness, but only one third will be refined in the fire, as precious metal is refined when the dross is burned away. 
And it shall come to pass that in all the land, says Yahweh, two parts therein shall be cut off and die, but the third shall be left therein. And I will bring the third part through the fire, and will refine them as silver is refined, and will try them as gold is tried. They shall call on my name, and I will hear them. I will say, it is my people, and they shall say, Yahweh is my Elohim. Zechariah chapter 13, verses 8 through 9. The wilderness is a literal place but it's much, much more than that. Since the wilderness is called the way of holiness, scripture indicates that the wilderness is a place where the rebels of Yahweh will be purged out. And I will purge out from among you the rebels and them that transgress against me. I will bring them forth out of the country where they sojourn and they shall not enter into the land of Israel. Ezekiel chapter 20 verse 38. The curses of Israel placed upon our people by Yahweh will finally and forever be lifted. Scripture speaks of the wilderness as a place of joy for all those Hebrew Israelites who escaped the sword in America. But not only will we rejoice, but the wilderness shall blossom and bud in rejoicing as well. The wilderness and the solitary place shall be glad for them and the desert shall rejoice and blossom as the rose. It shall blossom abundantly and rejoice even with joy and singing. The glory of Lebanon shall be given unto it, the excellency of Carmel and Sharon. They shall see the glory of Yahweh and the excellency of our Elohim. Strengthen you the weak hands and confirm the feeble knees. Then the eyes of the blind shall be opened and the ears of the deaf shall be unstopped. The lame man leap as an heart, and the tongue of the dumb sing. For in the wilderness shall waters break out, and streams in the desert. And the parched ground shall become a pool, and the thirsty land springs of water. In the habitation of dragons, where each lay, shall be grass with reeds and rushes. Here Yahweh shall give us rest as we learn to hear his voice without distraction as he dwells in the midst of us. Then shall we take the king's highway to Zion. And a highway shall be there, and a way, and it shall be called the way of holiness. The unclean shall not pass over it, but it shall be for those. The wayfaring men, though fools, shall not err therein. No lion shall be there, nor any ravenous beast shall go up thereon. It shall not be found there, but the redeemed shall walk there. And the ransomed of Yahweh shall return, and come to Zion with songs and everlasting joy upon their heads. They shall obtain joy and gladness, and sorrow and sighing shall flee away. Isaiah chapter 35 verses 1 through 10. The word journeys means stages, which is rather fitting when you consider that the wilderness journey and its encampments also represent stages in spiritual growth. During these trials, judgments, and miracles, Yahweh will set our tribes in order. Simply put, the wilderness is our graduation or failure to graduate from an inner boot camp designed to prepare us for the real thing, our journey into the promised land of Israel to take back and possess the land promised to our forefathers by covenant. There were 42 total encampments that progressed in three stages. As we learn about these encampments, you may ask yourself, how many stages of growth have you already experienced because the wilderness will not be a place to begin to practice. The Israelites' first test in the wilderness came in stage one, shortly after crossing the Red Sea, their baptism, where they journeyed into the wilderness of Shur. This was a three-day journey, a separation for sanctification, where they encamped at the bitter waters of Marah. Unable to drink the waters, 
Moses cast a tree into the bitter water, as Yahweh instructed, and the water became sweet. The bitter waters of Marah revealed a real problem with the Israelites. Moshe cried out to Yahweh about the problem, while the Israelites, on the other hand, grumbled amongst themselves against Moshe because of the problem. Therefore Yahweh made a decree and told Israel, If you will diligently hearken to the voice of Yahweh your Elohim, and will do that which is right in his sight, and will give ear to his commandments, I will put none of these diseases upon you, which I have brought upon the Egyptians, for I am Yahweh that heals you. Exodus chapter 15 verses 25 through 27. Remember, down in Egypt life had been Pharaoh-centered. The Israelites needed deliverance from more than just Pharaoh. They needed deliverance from their grumbling, self-centered, and bitter selves. Next, they pitched at Elam, where they were given a prophetic look at their future, if obedient. Elam contained 12 fountains, the 12 tribes, and 70 palm trees, the original nations representing the whole world. Here, Israel is being fed and given living waters to drink. However, the 12 tribes are also teaching, feeding, and watering the nations of the world as priests of Yahweh. They entered the desert of Sinai, where there was no water, and Israel once again complained and was given water. Upon fighting and defeating Amalek, they encamped there at Rephidim, meaning to rest. Here, Yahweh brought forth our first judges and rulers to establish order amongst our tribes. In the coming wilderness journey, our judges, rulers, and captains will once again be appointed. You shall provide out of all the people able men, such as fear Elohim, men of truth, hating covetousness, and place such over them, to be rulers of thousands, and rulers of hundreds, rulers of fifties, and rulers of tens. And let them judge the people at all seasons. Exodus chapter 18, verses 19 through 22. There they pitched their tents at Kibroth Hara'awa, which means in Hebrew, graves of lust, appetite, or covetousness. The people lusted after meat to eat, refusing the manna from heaven the bread of life, Yahshua. The meat was still between their teeth, and the wrath of Yahweh burned against the people, and Yahweh smote the people with an exceeding great plague. Then he called the name of that place, Kibroth Hara'awa, because there they buried the people who had lusted. Numbers chapter 11, verses 33 through 34. They encamped at Hazaroth, which means a place surrounded by a fence, as in a settlement or village, as Psalms 107 previously indicated. And there he makes the hungry to dwell, that they may prepare a city for habitation, and sow the fields, and plant vineyards, which may yield fruits of increase. Psalm chapter 107, verses 36 through 37. In the wilderness of Sinai, Yahweh prepared to give them his law, his marriage contract or vow. It was here that Miriam and Aaron complained against Moshe's Ethiopian wife, which was symbolic of Israel's attitude with Yahweh's marriage vow he was about to present at Mount Sinai. We can see this in the name of the encampment which they dwell, Rithma, which means to bind. Yahweh will bring us under the bonds of the new covenant, where he will rule over us by the rod of his word. Behold, the days come, said Yahweh, that I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Yehuda, not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day that I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, which my covenant they break, although I was an husband unto them said Yahweh, but this shall be the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, said Yahweh. 
I will put my law in their inward parts and write it in their hearts and will be their Elohim and they shall be my people. And they shall teach no more every man his neighbor and every man his brother saying, No, Yahweh, for they shall all know me from the least of them unto the greatest of them, said Yahweh, for I will forgive their iniquity and I will remember their sin no more. Jeremiah chapter 31 verses 31 through 34. Their next several encampments would bring about much activity. The camp at Ramon Perez means pomegranate of the breach. A pomegranate is representative of the laws, statutes, and judgments of Yahweh, so this is clearly a breach of the law that breaks forth. Just as famous priests of Israel's congregation, Korah, Dathan, and Abiram became envious of Moshe's place of authority and led a rebellion, Ramon Perez speaks of a dispersion or breaking up of Israel by the hand of Yahweh that will produce abundant fruit. Again, they are minished and brought low through oppression, affliction, and sorrow. He poureth contempt upon princes and causes them to wander in the wilderness where there is no way. Yet setteth he the poor on high from affliction and maketh him families like a flock. The righteous shall see it and rejoice, and all iniquity shall stop her mouth. Ezekiel chapter 20, verse 38, and Psalms 107, verses 39 through 41. They encamped at Tahath, meaning under the authority of, and Mozaroth, which means admonition or correction by one in authority. The scriptures speak of us coming under authority of a ruler or king who will admonish and correct us. The house of Dawid shall be exalted in the wilderness. And Dawid, my servant, shall be king over them, and they all shall have one shepherd. They shall also walk in my judgments and observe my statutes and do them. And they shall dwell in the land that I have given unto Jacob, my servant wherein your fathers have dwelt, and they shall dwell therein, even they and their children, and their children's children forever. And my servant Dawid shall be their prince forever. They that fear you will be glad when they see me, because I have hoped in your word. Psalms chapter 119 and verse 74, and Ezekiel chapter 37, verses 24 through 25. Then they pitched in the valley of Accor at Bani Yakan, which means sons or children. Here Achan stole gold, silver, and the accursed Babylonian garment and hid it in his tent. And I will give her vineyards from thence and the valley of Accor for a door of hope, and she shall sing there as in the days of her youth, and as in the day when she came up out of the land of Egypt. O.C. chapter 2, verse 15. And I will bring forth a seed out of Yaakov, and out of Yehuda, an inheritor of my mountains, and mine elect shall inherit it. And my servants shall dwell there, and Sharon shall be a fold of flocks, and the valley of Accor, a place for the herds to lie down in, for my people that have sought me. Isaiah chapter 65, verse 9 through 10. But the Aramean pronunciation of Achan also means twisting or lying. This twisting of truth appears to refer to a pagan Greek Jesus rather than the love of a Hebrew Yahshua. In the home stretch, so to speak, there is contention over the waters, the living water of the word. Another Achan is prophesied to twist the truth to hide the Babylonian garment deep inside his heart. Am I an Elohim at hand, says Yahweh, and not an Elohim afar off? Can any hide himself in secret places that I shall not see him, said Yahweh? Do not I feel heaven and earth? Jeremiah. Chapter 23, 
verses 23 through 24. They encamp next in Alman de Blath Aima, which means concealed or hidden. As Psalms chapter 81 and verse 27 says, Yahweh shall speak to us in the secret place of thunder. The wilderness and the solitary place shall be glad for them, and the desert shall rejoice and blossom as the rose. It shall blossom abundantly and rejoice even with joy and singing. The glory of Lebanon shall be given unto it, the excellency of Carmel and Sharon. They shall see the glory of Yahweh and the excellency of our Elohim. Isaiah chapter 35 verses 1 through 2. With total unity accomplished, no secrets hidden in our hearts, Yahweh will reveal His secrets unto His sons and His daughters. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of Yahweh, He is my refuge and my fortress, my Elohim, in Him will I trust. He shall cover you with His feathers, and under his wings shall you trust. You have made Yahweh, which is my refuge, even the Most High, your habitation. There shall no evil befall you, neither shall any plague come near your dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over you, to keep you in all your ways. They shall bear you up in their hands, lest you dash your foot against the stone. Psalms chapter 91, verses 1 through 12. The wilderness will cause Israel to be alone with Elohim, where we will learn that He provides for us in impossible situations. Overcomers lose their fear of circumstances or death because they see Elohim's hand in all things. The wilderness is to prepare us for our inheritance, Canaan land. Deuteronomy chapter 7 verses 1 through 5 has named all the nations who comprised Canaan land. Canaan means under the authority. So all seven of these nations had to be dispossessed of the land by the hand and power of Yahweh. Hittites means fear, terror in Hebrew. Overcomers will have conquered fear through the blood of Yahshua because Yahweh did not give us the spirit of fear. Gergeshites means dwelling on clay soil, a very unsure foundation that will never support a right way of living. Amorites means boaster. They were the strongest people in Canaan, just as pride is the stronghold or strongholds within brothers and sisters alike. Canaanites means to be humbled or brought low. Just as each believer must fall on the rock to be broken, rather than have the rock fall on them and be crushed. Parasites means a breach in the wall. So we must repair the breaches in our wall as Joshua did with his good report upon scouting Canaan land. Hivites means dwellers of the high place. And we know those high places are for worshiping of false gods. Deuteronomy chapter 7 verse 5 said, When we enter Canaan land, You shall destroy their altars, and break down their images, and cut down their groves, and burn their graven images with fire. Deuteronomy chapter 7 verse 5. And this is the exact meaning of Yebusites, to thresh desecrate, and utterly reject. Sin and deception must be thoroughly rejected and defeated in order for Yahweh's kingdom to have the dominion. You shall tread upon the lion and adder. The young lion and the dragon shall you trample under feet, because he has set his love upon me. Therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high, because he has known my name. He shall call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. Psalm chapter 91, verses 13 
through 16. Yes, the people of Yahweh had seven nations to defeat upon entering Canaan land that were stronger and mightier than they. But were they really stronger? And before Yahweh would grant them his power to cut down the Asherah of these seven nations, Israel had to first cut down their own graven images and Asherah within themselves. Then shall the covenant of peace promised to Israel be set in motion for all time. And I will set up one shepherd over them, and he shall feed them, even my servant Dawid. And he shall be their shepherd, and I, Yahweh, will be their Elohim, and my servant Dawid, a prince among them. I, Yahweh, have spoken it, and I will make with them a covenant of peace, and will cause the evil beast to cease out of the land, and they shall dwell safely in the wilderness, and sleep in the woods. And I will make them and the places round about my hill a blessing. And I will cause the shower to come down in his season. There shall be showers of blessing. Finally, we shall receive the latter rain. And the tree of the field shall yield her fruit. And the earth shall yield her increase. And they shall be safe in their land. And shall know that I am Yahweh. When I have broken the bands of the yoke, and delivered them out of the hand of those that served themselves of them. And they shall no more be a prey to the heathen, neither shall the beast of the land devour them, but they shall dwell safely, and none shall make them afraid. And I will raise up for them a plant of renown, and they shall be no more consumed with hunger in the land, neither bear the shame of the heathen any more. Thus shall they know that I, Yahweh, their Elohim, am with them. And they, even the house of Israel, are my people, said Yahweh, Elohim. And you, my flock, the flock of my pasture, are men, and I am your Elohim, said Yahweh, Elohim. Ezekiel chapter 34 Verses 23 through 31. An overcomer is called to feed the sheep and to guide them into all righteousness. But to do so, one must know the word and the law and how to apply them by the mind of Yeshua, our Savior, High Priest, and King. An overcomer must be balanced in law, grace, in justice and mercy, in discipline and in love. Remember Yahweh's definition of love. And this is love, that you walk after his commandments. Second John, verse 6.